Can everyone hear me all right? Give me a bit of a nod, thumbs up if you can hear me and see you. Perfect. Um, I'm, so I'm Rachel. I, I'm tutoring this next hour, hour and a half. Um, we've got a couple of other people on the call who are going to help. Um, so Natalie, who you'll either have spoken to or know from Butcher England. Um, and then we've also got Gareth, who's um, going to give me a hand as well, who works with Smile Through Sport. Um, so I'm assuming most people have because of lockdown and the life we've been living for the last few months. But if you have not used Zoom before, uh, just a couple of hints. So uh, if you want to put yourself on mute, it is in the bottom left hand corner. I would ask if you can leave yourself on mute until you're in the breakout rooms. And it just means we don't have lots of people talking at the same time. Um, I'm not offended if you want to leave your cameras off. Um, I do kind of feel like I'm not speaking to anyone if you all turn them off. So at least if some of you have got them on, I'm quite happy. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to leave mine on and you're going to have to look at me the whole way through. So there's nothing I can do about that. You've got my face. Um, We've already kind of used it, but this chat function along the bottom, please feel free as we go to put comments, questions, you know, criticisms. I'm quite happy with that. Just stick it in the chat for me and Natalie's going to keep an eye on it. Um, there's two little buttons called reactions. So one's a high, high five and one's a thumbs up. Feel free to do it. If you think I'm doing anything particularly good, seeing any points, give me a little bit of a thumbs up, particularly because you're on mute. Because if I say something funny and I just get nothing, I get a bit worried. So please feel free to use them as we go. Um, I am going to put you in breakout rooms at one point or two points, hopefully. If I lose you and the call drops out, please sign back in. I'm hoping that isn't going to happen and that I'm not going to lose you between rooms, but we'll give that a go. Um, so just a little bit more about me before we start. Um, I've been involved in Botcha for literally half my life now which is really really scary um so i've been around for about 17 years within that time had a variety of roles lots of coaching um tutoring officiating a bit of everything um and then in my my real life i run a disability sports organization um so we work with a uh, grassroots sport and botcha is one of the big sports that we do um, so we use lots and lots of adapted equipment and I'm actually surrounded by it today, which I am going to go through later, um, which is why we're going to basically talk through what we use, how we use it um, and uh, give you some hints and tips how it might be good for your sessions. I'm just letting other people in as I'm talking. So just bear with me a second. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to go through. Different equipment, how to use it. So the first thing we've got to do before you can decide what equipment you're going to use, we've got to talk about who plays botcha, who are these people that need the equipment, what are their focuses, that kind of thing. So I would, in my head, I would group botcha players into four very distinct groups. Um, and this is straight out of my head. So please do not hold this as gospel. This is just my opinion. Um, so there's that player who is after fun. We've got the developing player, so the one who's starting to progress into a talent pathway, like Raf said, he started to coach. Um, and then we've got elite players. So they're three. The other one is the random player, who doesn't particularly fit in any one box, but they're just a bit of everything. So what we're going to do first of all, I'm going to pop you into two breakout rooms, because there's a few less of work tonight. So one with Natalie and one with Gareth. I'm going to give uh, the group with Natalie, if you can talk about the elite player. So what kind of person are they? What do they want out of their sessions? What kind of equipment do you think they would want to use? Then the group that's with Gareth, if you can talk about that fun and that development player, what kind of equipment do they want? What kind of a player are they? What is their motivation for taking part? So Natalie's got the elite side. Gareth has the fun and development side. And you're just having a bit chat. What, who do you think they are? What do you think they need out of a session? So I'm going to attempt now to put you into breakout rooms. Um, it could all go wrong, but we'll see. Going to have to assign people because I want Natalie and Gareth to be in separate rooms. Which just bear with me. I'll just stare at this camera for a little while. All right. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to send you in that room. You've got about 
five minutes to have a quick chat and then Natalie and Gareth will feed back. So hopefully you're off. So, so far so good. I think we all came back. That's a good start. We were supposed to have um, a few more extra people. So we were going to have three breakout rooms. So obviously I only did two because there's less people, which has basically meant I've sat and stared at myself for four minutes, literally with nothing to do. I was like, yep, there's me on the camera. Lovely. It's like, this is weird. <laughs> Um, so if we uh, get a bit of feedback from those, uh, I don't know if Natalie, if you want to go first. Ladies yeah, first sure. So um, a bit of a random order the list, but I'll just uh, run down what we noticed. So we had the elite player and the things we spoke about were that we felt this player would be very focused and, and possibly quite protective of their equipment as well. There was um, certainly a theme around the BC3 player potentially being someone ha who has the most of this equipment, um, but we said they'd have lots of botcher balls, um, specialist ones for, for different shots, um, also other specialist equipment like ramps and chairs, um, Raf talked about strength and conditioning kit, um, things like CeraBands. Um, then we got into a funny conversation about ball containers in the shapes of ladles and other random uh, cookware, cookware shops. Um, yeah, other specialist ball holders, uh, potentially ramp extensions. Um, and not forgetting the sports assistant again is one of the key pieces of equipment if we can define it in that category. And then finally, we just mentioned about splints and other tools to help stabilise them with body position as well. Perfect. Uh, Gareth's group. So we had the, the fun player. Um, so first of all, we spoke about what types of equipment we might use. Um, so we spoke about um, using like hoops and skittles like for, for uh, targets and um, doing like activities like noughts and crosses um, and like traffic lights and stuff like that and um, we spoke about how it's it's um, more fun activities and um, so like game and activity focused rather than like more learning like botches like skills focused and um, it's got to be enjoyable um, and we've got to make them want to come back so like it's at that point where we could potentially get them hooked to botcher and make them want to come back. Um, and it's got to be very active. That's what we spoke about. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. So um, this is kind of some of my thoughts. And to be fair, you have mentioned everything that's on here. Um, I'm hoping you can see this. Uh, can everyone see the, the three little dudes that I've drawn? Uh, I managed to convince Gareth that I'd drawn these freehand today, which I think is quite impressive. <laughs> um, but we've got, got the, three, the three different athletes or groups. So, yeah, like you guys were saying, all the, the stuff's on there. So you kind of go from the fun side where the, they want varied activity, they've got a short attention span, they want things that are going to draw them in, that are colourful, that are exciting, that are fun right through to elite where you've got really specific stuff and they're going to use less hoops and skittles and cones but they're really going to focus in on botcher specific drills and and activities things that are going to challenge them and then you've got that developing group where they're they're probably still relatively young or new to the sport so they they want to have fun but actually there needs to be that purpose and, and they're going towards that elite level um so I don't know if, if anyone wants to stick anything in the chat, if there's anything you think that we've missed or if you are quite happy with that. Everyone looking all right so far? I'm just going to stop this share then quite quickly. Well, we will um, we'll send these out. So the little pictures and things, if you want to keep a copy of my drawing for the rest of your lives, you can have it i'm quite happy with that so you will get these afterwards um so really we've we've worked out who our players are like i say there's this fourth group which is that just that anomaly so that person that just appears that has natural talent and they shoot straight through to that elite level but actually they're not really that bothered they're just there to have fun it just happens that they're good at the same time and they kind of 
go between all the groups but really you've got three groups and then those just randoms that are just at the end there um with all of those you then think right i know who my player is now you need to think about that equipment that you're going to use so most of you will have been on some form of leaders award coaching award been to anything um to do with botcha at an england camp or a, a camp for scotland um, and the step principle will have been mentioned you cannot get the this far into botcha and not have heard step and i'm going to show you though just in case anyone hasn't unshared my screen a bit prematurely there sorry if it's going to let me go there you are so this is the step principle so this is how we adapt any activity. So you've got your botcher skill or your drill and you can adapt it in four different ways. So you can change the space that you're using. So you can change it from a massive space to a teeny tiny space. You can go indoor to outdoor. Um, you can also um, change a wood floor to carpet. Anything about the space you can change. You can change the task. So what are they actually trying to achieve? Are they trying to use one botcher ball or are they trying to use six botcher balls? That kind of thing. Um, people is a funny one because for most coaches, you've got who you've got. You've got the players you've got, you've got the group you've got, but you can change how you group them for particular tasks. The one in red that we're focusing on tonight, obviously, is the equipment. It's the easiest thing to change. It's the thing that most people will be drawn to. So if you're drawn to colours, you're going to be drawn to colourful hoops. If you want it to be more fun and varied, it's the thing you can do exactly the same skill, but you can change the equipment and it feels totally different. So that's what we're focusing on, this equipment part of the step principle. So now I need to stop sharing my screen. So for anyone who has ever been tutored by me before, you will know the idea of sitting still for an hour and a half really stresses me out, which is why I'm kind of on my seat like this, like I need to stand up. So for the next bit, I am going to stand up and kind of wander away from the camera and show you some equipment. If at any point you cannot see me, give her a little bit of a wave and a shout and Gareth is in, a, in the same room so he can shout and tell me I'm not actually on camera anymore. So what I'm going to show you now for probably the next half an hour, 20 minutes, is just a massive range of different equipment. I'm going to show you what it is, tell you how we use it, where we bought it from, how you can get it for free if you don't actually have it. So I'm just going to move, get rid of my chair as well. So, so the first thing we're going to think about is using thing, equipment for targets. So easiest one is a hoop so you can get any range of hula hoops so these ones are the brilliant because they're flat so if you've got a base 3 player and you put a normal hula hoop in front of them they cannot well rarely can get in that hoop unless they are a good player like Ra. so you've got to have enough power with a hula hoop to bounce it in flat hoops are the future so they're the best to use um, I actually, these ones are what are called agility hoops. So they're actually sold for people to run in and out of, which is why they're flat. So it's to stop them tripping over. So um, that's what they are. These little ones were just bought from the works. So pound shop, the works, anywhere like that, lovely little flat hoops. I think they were supposed to be for hopscotch, but botcher. That's what you're buying for. So generic hoops. Obviously, the bigger the hoop, the easier it's going to be. So if you're working with beginners, you want this one. If you're working with less experienced players, uh, more experienced players, you're going to get smaller. So hoops. If you're feeling fancy, these are the same thing. It is still a circle target. So I'm just going to bring that there. But they're actually designed for basketball. They are completely flat. They roll up in your botcha bag, so you don't even have to carry them. Um, and they've got lovely numbers printed on them. So you don't even have to work about how many points each hoop is worth, because you just chuck that on the floor. That's going to disappear because I've got a green screen. That's a bit weird. Um, so you don't even have to work it out. Chuck that on the floor, and then your session's already planned. You've actually got your game ready to go. 
These are a bit expensive. Um, they're from Youth Sport Direct. Um, they are pretty expensive, but totally worth it um, if you're fancy fancying them. I'm just going to move this chat because I can't see. Something that we got, um, I actually stole from a different coach who's not on the call, so I can say that. But these are little, come a bit closer, they're carpet cutouts, so just off cuts of carpet, cut into different shapes, um, the different colours because there were different off cuts of carpet. But again, that gives you something to aim at, and it's exactly the same drill, so with all three things, so you've aimed at hoops, you've aimed at flat markers and you've aimed at these bits of carpet, you've worked on exactly the same skill, but actually it feels different. You could do three weeks worth of sessions and a player's going to think, well, I did something different tonight. I aimed at the hoop or I aimed at the carpet. They're not going to, that boredom's not going to set in. Other markers. So these are really popular for the sessions we do. So they're just giant cards, so just playing cards, but obviously you can see perspective wise, it's giant. Then they get smaller, then they get smaller again, and then if you're feeling really cruel or you're working with someone like Raph, put an actual playing card on the floor. There is nothing to stop you doing that and saying, well actually, if you get it on there, I'm then gonna move that and give you the next one down. If you can do that, I'm gonna give you that one. If you can do that one, here's a challenge, here's an actual playing card. And that gives players something to progress and work towards. Random other things, so markers with numbers on. So again, I like things with numbers on because I don't have to actually think about what score am I going to give someone if they land on the marker, it's already done for me. Throw down lines. So any sports shop will do throw down lines for sport. They're flat, means you can aim and land on them. So they're your markers. So yeah, you've got hoops, you've got cards, you've got markers. The other thing that you can use to aim at is something um, which is a very popular bit of equipment within our office. So it's called the wedge. It comes from New Age Curling. It is quite big to carry when you've got all your other bots of equipment, so you've got to kind of be prepared for it. And it's literally a big wedge, bots of balls fit in the holes, and you get a number of points. What I would say, this costs 85 quid, and it's made of foam. Just buy a bit of wood, find someone who knows how to drill holes in it, make your own, if you can, because you'll see they get absolutely battered it is just not worth the money unless you're lazy and just like me want to just buy one and use it straight away um so that's the wedge gareth's favorite bit of equipment to be honest right so they're things that you can use to aim at so you're working on accuracy you can aim at all of those now i'm going to think about power so you're thinking you're still aiming at something, but you're trying to work out how much power you're putting behind. Are you just knocking it over? Are you just getting close to something and not knocking it over? So the biggest thing to use will be Skittles. Again, this is green, so it's going to disappear with the white green screen. It's a giant Skittle. I know you can't see it because of my green screen. That was a bit silly. I've got a blue one. So a giant Skittles that you roll up to, knock them over. Different, different sizes make it harder or easier. We've got little cups, so you can stack cups and I can knock them over. Again, pound shop, don't spend money in sports, sports shops, just go to the pound shop, Tesco's, that kind of thing, little cups. The other thing, if you haven't got Skittles, and well, if you're from the Northeast and you like to steal things, traffic cones, that always works. I did not steal this one, gonna be honest with you. It's too little to be a traffic cone. But basically, traffic cones, 
Now these are really good for not just knocking over, rolling up to, but you can balance things on the top. So instead of just aiming at the bottom, can you aim at the top of it? Can you knock stuff off it? Can you touch the cone without knocking something off? So there's loads of games you can play with those. This is a posh version that you can't steal. So this is effectively, um, you balance the ball on the top and you knock it off. These are designed for cricket, for people who can't hit the ball if it's bowled at them. So instead it's just placed on here and they hit it. So that makes quite a good cone. Then you've got normal cones. Again, roll up and touch them, put something on the top, can you knock it off? Can you touch the cone and leave it on, okay? So that's cones and skittles. The next thing that we have is called a hurdle. So I don't know if you can see that. So it effectively becomes a football goal. So can you roll the ball through it? And then that's like a football goal. Can you, if you're practicing your lob shot, can you throw it over the top? If it's this way around, can you hit this and actually knock it over? So you can use them. Again, they're really expensive. Well, not really expensive, but they're more expensive than the two pound I like to pay for stuff. So they, they have got, you're gonna have to spend money to get those. Or you can just go to, I think this is the works as well. So that is an actual football goal that I've bought. I think it costs me about eight pounds. You don't have to put the net on the back, but effectively you've made yourself a little goal, put the box of balls in. You're still working on that aim at something. And then these, so these are um, Aldi's finest. So um, giant botcher balls. So you can either roll your normal botcher ball at it to get it to move one way or the other. But also because we got red and blue, we've got giant botcher now. So actually you're playing the same sport, but it just feels a bit different. That is the same. So particularly over lockdown, suddenly people were at home, they didn't have their botcher club to go to with, they didn't have their own equipment. They were now stuck at home with no botcher. So there's been a big campaign this year, Botcher England of, um, for the big botcher throw off, had a lot of information about, it doesn't have to be a botcher ball. So we use red and blue tennis balls and you've got the same game, red and blue bean bags, same game, pair of socks. Now, some of the people we work with, um, particularly those guys with learning disabilities, they just thought it was hilarious at a session, take your socks off, we're going to play with your socks. Not advisable under COVID situations, but when we get back to normal, that would be, how funny would that be in a session, right? Everyone take their socks off, we're going to play with my socks. Still playing the game just makes it a bit different. Has anyone got any questions now before I keep going? Everyone all right? Yeah, sure. nothing much. Well, uh, Rats reminded us about the socks can go in the laundry basket game. Nice. <laughs> and um, Jan was just checking, uh, hopefully we could get a, a bit of a list together of some of these ideas with uh, recommended suppliers, just the kind of things you've mentioned really, Rach, so we can follow up yep. with that afterwards. Yeah, so at the, on these PowerPoint slides, there is a link of places where I've bought them um, and there's a picture of pretty much everything that I've got on the floor. So you'll be able to, obviously it's a whistle stop tour tonight, but then you'll be able to look and go, oh yeah, I remember she said that. And then you'll have that, not a problem. So they're pretty much, I'm just gonna check I've shown you everything on my floor. Yep. That's pretty much things to aim at, things to hit. The one thing I have missed, so I actually stole this, I steal things a lot, stole this off Gareth's son, bless him, doesn't know where you've got it. It's one of those little soft plate tunnels that the little ones can um, go through. So we actually use it, kind of like the um, botcher bucket challenge. So you throw up and into the tunnel. You can lie it on the floor so that they have to throw through the tunnel or roll through the tunnel if they're a ramp there. But if they're moving on to shots such as the um, 
in off shaft. So you're thinking about angles. You can actually tie this in and it creates that corner and that angle. So you can start saying to them, you're going in this way and out that way. And it shows them that in off angle and that kind of discussion that you can have with them. Turn that around so you don't get the green side. Right, so then we're going to think about themed sessions. So this is something that you're coaching for 52 weeks of the year. You might have players who are top of their game, elite, literally don't, aren't interested in all this colourful stuff, literally want to do jack first ball and I'm aiming at the jack and I'm, I'm working, about, working on actual botcher drills. You might get to Christmas and just want to go a bit crazy for one hour and that's normal so i'm quite well i'm not some people are quite professional at work all year round so they're going and they're professional and they, they do their job gets to christmas they want to put on a christmas jumper and they want to do fun fun games in the office it's exactly the same with botcher so they come to their session and they want to do something themed and a bit different so Christmassy wise. Christmas is really good because you can buy lots of stuff, so decoration stuff. So this was, I think it's a pin the nose on the snowman type thing. But actually here, I've now got a target. I can lie on the floor and I can say to my player as well, today aim at the snowman because he's, he's bigger. If you're really good, aim at one of the little penguins. Robins, I think it's a penguin. Aim at the penguin. Actually, this time, aim at the snowman's hat. And you just makes it a bit different. They're still working on the same skills. It's a bit Christmassy. We invested in some different balls. So we have little Christmas pudding balls to use at Christmas. And we've got some snowman balls for Christmas. Again, they're using a ball. They're throwing it. They're rolling it down the ramp, they're aiming at something, but it just feels a bit daft and a bit silly and a bit different to use something that's a Christmas pudding. Another game that we play at Christmas, and it's green, idiot. Oh well. Oh, can you see that? So it's a Christmas tree, laminated. There's our logo. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, it's a Christmas tree. I'm gonna think about this for next time. No green stuff. But basically what we did was decorate the Christmas tree. So you could aim at each part of the Christmas tree with your baubles, which we are butcher balls, and you're decorating the tree. So if you're a grassroots player or a club, you could have a massive Christmas tree for the whole club. If you're elite, you could have a little one like this. And actually I've got six places to put six baubles and that's your decorating the tree. I'm just gonna let somebody else in. Something that um, we played once um, at Academy, so uh, it's the Vipers Academy in the Northeast, was um, pass the parcel, but instead of moving it round and every time the music stops, you open a layer, we had um, passed something round. When the music stopped, it was your turn to throw at the parcel, and if you hit the parcel, you unwrapped a layer. So it's the same game, but it's about, actually I'm gonna throw at that parcel, unwrap a layer. And it was the same deal that at the bottom there was a prize and every layer we had a little prize. So that was Christmas. So then the other one is Easter. So, which is my favorite. We have, again, from the pound shop, the little carrot baskets. So they're normally sold for um, the kids that are doing their little Easter egg. Um, trails and hunts. So we have those. They're quite good for throwing your ball into. So it becomes the bucket and you're aiming to throw it into. Turn it upside down and then you've got yourself a little skittle. The other thing, with these lovely little Easter egg hunt eggs, get one that's not green. So the little plastic eggs, if you chuck them all over the floor, can somebody aim at it? And if they hit it, they get to put it in their basket and then you've got the winner is the one with the most eggs at the end of the session. You can get these little golden ones. So if you get a golden one, is that worth two eggs? That kind of thing. Um, 
and then you can buy shops always have these little um cardboard couldn't think of the word little cardboard targets effectively so most people look at these and think oh that's really good for easter crafts i'll use that i walk in and think oh i can put that on the floor and make it a botch target so anything that you can put on the floor perfect so that's easter but again any theme session you're having so don't know if some of you will have seen last year uh, national Botch today had a theme of 35 and the clubs were told do something which is 35 related and every club did something different so some people made 35 hour botch balls some people had a 35 target through with that some people had 35 different hoops aimed at that so whatever your theme is and your target you can use the equipment to make that for those. So then my favorite thing, you'll have, you'll have picked up pretty quickly. I don't like paying a lot of money for equipment. So particularly for botcher, because I'm going to either put it on the floor and it's going to get dirty, or people are going to throw things at it. And I'm quite protective of my equipment. So people are going to throw things at it and damage it. I don't want to spend 80 pound on it. So I'm big on free equipment. So my favorite bit of free equipment is, a new, is literally just a newspaper. So this is brilliant because you can get it for free, but you've got, so you've got one target. It's quite big. It's great for grassroots level. One target, then you fold it in half and you've actually got a harder target and you fold it in half and you've got a harder target and you fold it in half again and again and actually from one bit of paper that hasn't cost you anything you've got about 10 different targets for different level of player and you can use that skittles are great but again the cost money you've got to buy them if you get to a session and you've got a coffee shop the paper cups so can you throw into the top of the cup? Can you put something on the top and knock it off? It also stops them being single use because then that sits in your botcher kit for the next however many weeks you're using it and that just becomes your skittle. The other thing that we've started using are these little things that you get in um, like Greg's, McDonald's. So when you've got too many coffees, so you can't carry them, they give you these funny little things to carry them make it safer. Botcher balls fit in these circles. So actually if someone's really good, can they throw it into here? Not advisable for ramp players because I don't even think Raph could do that one and get it to come up and in. Probably a next challenge, Raph, we might have to send that to you. Raph's already mentioned it, but I am a big fan of the bucket challenge. So throw the ball into the bucket. So <laughs> I've just seen that from Raph saying he's on for that challenge. So literally throw your ball in the bucket. We, um, the World Championships were, how many years ago now? Can't remember. Two years ago, thank you. So two years ago, we had um, an activity stand at the front of the, the World Championships. So we had um, players from all over the world, spectators from everywhere, taking part in a challenge where effectively we had a bucket that I just happened to have in our office and I took it with me and people thought it was the best game they'd ever played. They weren't really bothered about what was going on in the main hall. It was just about my activities. That's all I'm saying. But it was just a free bucket that they were throwing at. So that's good. At Christmas, you get free buckets. So you get your sweets and you eat them all far too quickly. And then effectively you've got a bucket. So can you aim at that? Can you use that? I'm gonna check again that I've said everything that's on my floor. Yep. So they're my free ones. Another one that is really good for being free, which my brother uses when he's coaching, um, is bottles of pop. So empty pop bottles are really easy to knock over. So from a grassroots point of view, put the pop bottle down on the floor and they're going to knock it over and that's like a skittle. But actually if you start filling it with things, so fill it with water, it becomes heavier, it's harder to knock over. 
fill it with sand, it's really heavy and it's really hard to knock over. So you're working on that power, the target is identical, but you're changing that pressure they need to use to knock it over. Everyone all right for questions? Everyone all right? Cool. Yeah, all good, nothing to report. <laughs> well, so, now thinking about equipment, which is disability specific. So not only are you thinking, what level is my player at? So are they fun, grassroots, are they elite? What are they doing? You're now thinking about actually, what do they need disability wise? So for those guys that have really short attention spans and you've got 30 people in your club and actually they're getting one turn and then it's got to go down the line and come back to them. That can be the longest wait in history. It can be really, really hard to wait for other people to have turns. So I always recommend having a series of squigglies. So there's the camera. Squigglies. So uh, lots of different things that are sensory that they can play with. So that's green as well. So lots of things that are sensory that actually once they've thrown a botcher ball, this is theirs to play with and it keeps them entertained and they're not actually distracting the three players that are yet to go because they've got something to play with. So that's something for those guys. We've also got, so I'm not going to go through actual botcher balls and you'll notice that I do not have a real botcher ball anywhere in sight. So I'm not going to go through which, which type of botcher ball you're going to have or which ramp you should have. So I'm about to um, go through what you can use instead of ramps. So this is definitely for the fun end of the spectrum, that grassroots that actually let's just get them playing. Doesn't matter if these ramps are in no way related to the rules. So these cannot be used in competition, some of them, but they'll get somebody playing and they'll get them having fun. So a beginner's grassroots ramp, can look like something like this. A bit like a drain pipe, something that the ball goes from top of the ramp to the bottom of the ramp onto the game of play. So they're the cheapest form of plastic ramp. You can also use though, this is a curling ramp, does exactly the same job. It gets something from the top of it to the bottom of it on the court. It's a lot heavier but it's a lot wider. So if you've got someone who actually wants to do it themselves, wants to hold it, this is easier to hold on to than a thinner botcher ramp. So that's quite a good idea. They are heavy though. So this is one that we've just started using. It's effectively, I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera. It's really, really thin. It's just got a really thin bit of plastic. So it's brilliant for shoving in the car and it does the same job, gets the ball from the player onto court. Um, so that's pretty cool. I just hold that. I don't know if you want to make a note of that one. That's where it comes from. But I will send you this. So they're the ramp options that you've got. So the other thing, we have um, a player within Smiles Network who is a BC3 player. She should use a ramp. However, she point blank refuses. Botcher isn't her sport. She doesn't want to have a ramp, so she tries everything but. So, some of the things we have used with her. Literally a hockey stick, so that she can just hit the ball towards where it's going. Uh, if anyone's ever done new age curling, they'll have seen one of these. So it's a curling pusher. So again, it does the same thing. It lets them push the ball. Um, this is something that I did spend a lot of money on and I have to be honest, nobody has ever used, so I do not recommend them. But these are designed for botcher. So a botcher ball fits into here and you can throw the botcher ball, you can push the botcher ball with that. So it's effectively a curl and pusher for botcher, um, but they are quite expensive and nobody's used ours. So I would make sure someone's going to use it before you buy it. With these, so when you're thinking of adapting things, 
we use these quite a lot. So they're effectively a bit of material with lots of elastic. So if you've got a player who is struggling to get hold of the, the um, sticks or the ramp, there is nothing to stop you with their permission. Don't do it without their permission. Velcroing them to things effectively. So this helps them get hold of it. So if they keep dropping it and they're getting frustrated, these wrap around your arm and around the stick or the ramp and it just keeps them in place. And it means actually they can concentrate on aiming and getting that ball in the right place rather than them dropping it all the time. Okay, so, nearly there guys, promise. So, for um, when you've got someone who comes along and they're actually gonna take their botcher a bit further, they're gonna compete. They need to know the rules, they need to know about staying on their backsides, they need to know about waiting their turn, they need to know about refereeing. You might start getting them to referee in your club or you might start teaching rules. Now, the paddle, so most people will have seen a referee's paddle, and again, I haven't brought one because it's real equipment, so I didn't bring it. So it's got red on one side, blue on the other, so, and you just turn it. But actually, that's really hard to do, so it's hard to twist your wrist and show both sides. So some of the things we use, we have um, just sweatbands, red ones and blue ones, so you can put the sweatband on. And if it's Blue's turn to go, you can lift it up. If it's Red's turn, you can lift it up. So they can referee without the need to hold something. Um, if they have autism or they just want something a bit more sensory, we have a blue dolphin and we have a red dolphin and they can hold up the right dolphin. They're doing the same thing. They're, they're refereeing, they're seeing who's next to go, but it's a bit more fun and it's a bit more sensory. These are my favorite things. So one of the things about botcha is staying on your bum. So when, it is, when you're taking your shot, you've got to be on your bum. So these are quite good. We use these a lot. So a red marker goes on the seat and that red player's bum has to stay on that marker. Blue marker, the blue player's bum has to stay on that marker. And that's just to show, well, you're red. When it's your turn, that's where your bum has to be because you're the red player. So you can use those. From a coaching point of view, you can use bubble wrap to take that the next step. So we have very jazzy red bubble wrap and blue bubble wrap. So from a coaching point of view, you should really be doing a new preparation for every shot. So you should have your shot, evaluate it, think about it. You should then be moving, resetting, thinking about where you want to be. So what we use this for, if you're the red player, say, we would put this on their seat, they would have a shot, and they have to move enough to make some of the bubbles pop before they can take the next shot. And that gives them a sensory thing of, I've had my shot, I need to move, now I can have my next shot. And that at a very beginner's level, starts teaching them about, have your shot, reset up, have your next shot. And that's just bubble wrap to do that. I would recommend though, so we've bought jazzy colourful bubble wrap because we use it for a lot of stuff. But if you get just white bubble wrap, which is a lot cheaper, and put some red cord underneath, it is exactly the same thing. It's red as far as the player can see. Okay. Then, sign of the times that we are in. So obviously it's COVID. Um, most of the equipment that I've shown you can be cleaned but it is something you need to think about. So if you're gonna use the bubble wrap and you're gonna spend 10 pound on a roll of red bubble wrap and it's beautiful, actually when you can only use that with one player and then it has to go in the bin, is it worth it? If you're gonna give your players things like this to play with and to use, and the first thing they're gonna do is chew on it or that it's gonna to go to their mouth, can you clean it? Or is it actually they're gonna use it once and then it's gonna to have to go in the bin. Um, things like the carpet, carpet targets and these flat targets, can you clean them? What can you clean them with? So they can't just go in the washing machine. 
You can't use a wipe on the carpet. So what have you got that you can use? Can you use the aerosol anti-vax? Have you got a really posh fogging machine that you can spray stuff with? At the minute, love anything which is kind of wipe downable. So if I can put wipes over it, then that is great for the minute because obviously everything needs to be cleaned. Something which messes with my staff's head at the minute, all of our equipment is kept in lovely jazzy boxes because I can clean the inside of the box and I can clean the outside of the box and it can just go in here and the equipment's fine. Obviously, botcha balls tend to come in bags, so I wouldn't recommend doing this with basically three players' balls or elite players' balls, but out of the bags and into a box, you can clean each individual ball and put it in a clean box, but the bags are not easy to clean. So actually, at the minute, should we not be using them? And we should be taking the balls out and having it in things that we can clean. That would be my bit of advice at the minute. Um, pitfalls. So when you're buying all this equipment, you've got to go back to where we started. So who are your players? What do they want? So I've coached from first time somebody has ever heard of the sport right through to an England level. If I rock up to the England squad with some of these things, they're just going to laugh at me and send me home. They just don't want to see it. For whatever reason, they are focused on that. However, I have worked with some elite players who do want to play with it. But for most of them, they don't want it. They're aiming at jack ball. They're aiming at red and blue balls. That, that is fine. That's what they want to do. You've got to know who you're going towards because you will lose their respect as a coach instantly if you get this wrong. So if you rock up to your England squad with... Um, I don't know, balls with smiles on them and monster cups and skittles with Avengers on, which we do have, they're not going to respect you. They might be okay if you turn up with just skittles, but maybe not the baby ones, not the ones with Avengers on. So you've got to know what your players want. I'm going to come back to this wedge. So, as I said before, this is Gareth's favourite bit of equipment. When Gareth first started coaching for us, this was the bit of kit he first learned to use. He knew how to use it. He knew what, how to do a good session using it. He was really, really comfortable with it. What Gareth didn't think about was actually he'd been taking it to the same group for four weeks. And there's only so many times you can aim at the number 50 before it's like, yeah, I get that, that that's good. Now what? So you've got to make sure that even if you love this equipment, that it's what your players need. So it's player focused, not coach focused. Sorry, Gareth. Right. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, so I've mentioned it a few times. Expensive equipment is expensive. It can be expensive. Obviously, you can do it for free, and you can do different versions of it. But you've got to make sure when you're buying something which is an investment for you or for your club that it's gonna get used. So these brilliant things, so this, which was a brilliant idea, we were gonna put the botch of ball in it and we work in care homes, so they can't throw. So we're gonna put the ball here and all of our little old ladies and, and old gents, we're gonna chuck the ball with this and that was gonna be great. We took it in and they all took one look at it and went, nope, not doing that. So actually, I should have bought one, not the four that I did buy, which is a bit daft. But you've got to make sure it's worth it. Something else we bought, so you've got to think things through. So I was totally sold this. So Jan knows this because I complain about this a lot. So this is a realistic looking botcher set. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this. Can you hear that? So they were sold, they are still sold for quite a lot of money. I think it's about £130. They are a visually impaired botcher set. And you think, get in, ball with a bell in it. It's an actual botcher ball. So it, they're brilliant. You think, botcher ball with bell in it, VI botcher without the grid, brilliant. What I never thought about, and what they don't tell you, is once you've thrown this jack with a bell in it, it stops, and then it doesn't make any more noise. 
So actually it is nothing useless because it doesn't give you anything to aim at unless you pick it up every time and go, which you're not going to do in a botcher game. So you've got to not just be like me and get excited and say, oh, that's brilliant. I really want it. And then go, oh, but it doesn't actually work. So that would be my bit of advice. Gonna check us to show you a minute. Yes, I'm gonna come back now. So anyone got any other questions that I might have gone over really quickly or everyone all right? Yeah. That's keen for the Avengers cones, that's for sure. Nice. <laughs> like it, like it. You're a bit of an anomaly there, Raf. <laughs> So what I'm going to do now, so basically what I have hope I've shown you is that you need to have a bit of imagination and you need to know your players. So we're going to have a bit of an equipment challenge. So I'm going to give you three or four minutes now. You are not allowed to leave your seat. And I want you to think of something that you've got around you that you could use as a bit of equipment in a botcher drill. So it can be anything, it can be a phone, it can be a table mat, it can be your keys. Find something that you can use. You're then going to explain it to the other people in your breakout group. So what is it, how are you going to use it, and who are you going to use it with? So I'm going to pop you into your groups again. So I'll have to do that manually again. Actually, I'll leave you in the same groups if that's all right. Um, and you're going to have about five minutes to explain it to everyone else. So Gareth will give me a wave once everyone's gone in his group. And it'll just be, what have you got? How are you gonna use it? So I'm just gonna split you up. Welcome back. All right, have I got everyone back? Hey, we've done that twice and not lost anyone. I'm very impressed. Normally I kick at least one person off the call. Um, I'm not really going to get used to feedback individually from your groups because obviously it's really specific about what bit of equipment you've had. Um, I don't know if anybody's got any other bits of equipment that they regularly use that is really different and actually it really works. don't know if anyone wants to, to give a shout. Sorry if not. Uh, from the works, because I'm a fan of the works as well. My good. They had um, extendable plastic hands with a pointy finger. And I find that really useful for people with autism or learning difficulties that I point where I want them to go so that I'm not leaning over and they're losing contact with my face. Yeah. But I can point at what I want. And just using a stick doesn't really do it. So yeah. the, the pointy hand thing was really useful. And it's telescopic, so it's nice and easy. I think it was about two pounds. Nice. The works is definitely the place to go, definitely. Anyone else? It's all quite happy. Yep, Caroline. Don't forget you're on mute. No, nope. uh, believe it or not, I would actually deal with, in my, one of my clubs, um, we have people with visual impairment, and <laughs> we didn't have anything special. So we actually got a beach ball and put barley into it. Nice. So therefore, so we put it in the centre, and whenever they, you were hitting the ball, you could actually hear it rattling. And then the rest of us who, were, who hadn't any visual impairment, we actually all put on uh, eye visors so we couldn't see to make it actually just a bit of fun. I now feel a little bit worse about the VI Botcher set that I spent a lot of money on when a beach ball and football in it. <laughs> we, we couldn't afford the, the fancy Botcher sets. So that's why we got the beach ball and barley. <laughs> Never again. Not worth it. <laughs> Um, has anyone got any questions or anything before we like have any summarise it? Quite happy. What I'm gonna show you is we'll get this, so don't worry, but I'm just gonna um share my screen again. Um these are just my reminders of what I'm gonna show you. So you will get all of that which has got links to the stuff I've shown you. Um but what it's got at the end, so it's got our favourites. So I literally cannot go into the works without coming out with something for a botcher session or for, a, we do all sports, so I buy something every time. So that links you to that online shop. What I would say is if you haven't got a works near you, that's perfect. 
but they are more expensive online than they are in the shops themselves. So it's always worth, if you've got the option, obviously COVID allowing to go into the shop because it's slightly cheaper. The next one is not to be confused with Sports Direct. So Sports Direct is what would be on the high street um, selling trainers, clothes and equipment. Sport Directory is only online and that you'll get that link. And they do really, really cheap sports equipment. So it's the cheapest company I've found. So if you Google where to buy sports equipment, you'll get um, Maud Sports and you'll get Newitz and Davies Sports, which are all great, but they are more expensive than Sports Directory. So I always recommend having a look for that one. Um, Curlin.com is where you can buy the wedge if you want to, to get that one. Um, it's also where you get the VI Botcher set if you think that would work for your group. Um, some of the ramps, some of the targets come from there. For actual Botcher balls and for uh, ramps, I would recommend you always go through to um, Botcher England and, and go from there. Um, yeah, Yes, that's a good point, Rosie. They do have um, a loyalty card at the works, so you get points. Um, definitely worth having um but we have put those links on when you actually get this powerpoint so i'm just going to stop the share so i can see is when you actually get this powerpoint it'll have the photographs on of the stuff i've shown you tonight and i'll show you what came from where um but my my advice would always be if you go to a sports shop and ask for disability equipment it'll have loads of money piled on the top because it's specialist if you go to um Tesco's and go for garden games and outdoor equipment and children's toys it's the same stuff it's just a lot cheaper so that would always be my advice um that's pretty much what I've got um first of all I hope it's it's what you were expecting and um, this is the first one of these um Natalie I know uh, well before you go if you want to pop anything in the chat good bad or ugly quite happy got a thick skin not really you know go for it and um, if you'd prefer not to do that you can email natalie so she did send you the link with the dining instructions so feel free to pop some feedback into natalie um and yeah thank you very much for your time this evening <laughs>